Okay, here we go. We're talking about cumulative review number three. All right, I'm going to do questions one, two, and four to ten. All right, number three I'm going to do in a separate video because I have to use a calculator and I can't, there's no program for that here, so I'll have to use a different computer. So number three will be a separate video. All right, um, here we go. Numbers one and two. Let's start off with number one. Let me get this little thing out of here for sure. Number one, remember this is from our first unit unit number one okay um, find the equation of a square that has a center of negative three four and a point on the circle is six comma eight so if you remember there is our standard of form standard form for an equation of a square is this and remember that h and k are our center okay so if and this is a point on the circle, so that's x and y. So I'm going to do two steps in one. I'm going to plug that in for x and y, and then I'm going to plug this in for h and k. h and k. So I have x, which is 6, minus negative 3, so plus 3, squared, plus y, which is 8, minus 4. Remember, the reason we're doing this is because we're wanting to solve for r squared. We need our r squared term. We know our center, but we need to know what r squared is equal to. All right, so if I do 6 plus 3, that's 9. 9 squared plus 4 squared equals r squared. Well, 9 squared is 81. 81 plus 16 equals r squared. So r squared equals 97. Now, you could take the square root of both sides if I don't know what r is, but in your actual standard form for a square, all you're concerned about is r squared. So, my answer will be x plus 3 squared plus y minus 4 squared. Wow, can you read that? There you go. Equals 97. All right. Okay. Um, there was another way you could have done that. You could use a distance formula. Found the distance between the center and the circle, or and the point on the circle. Okay, and that would have given you your radius, and just which would have been the square root of 97, and then r squared would have been 97. Okay. Next, solve the following rational equation. Remember, to do this, we need our common denominator. I'm going to multiply everything by my common denominator. If I factor this, that's, remember that's x plus 3 x minus 3. So our common denominator is just that. So I'm going to multiply everything by x plus 3, x minus 3 over 1. So I'll hit that first fraction. So my x minus 3's will cancel and I'll just have x plus 3. Minus 2, my x plus 3's will cancel and I'll have x minus 3. And then here, the entire thing will cancel out, so I'll just have equals 2x. Now distribute 3x plus 9, remember this is a negative 2, minus 2x plus 6 equals 2x. Okay, so I have x over here and a 2x, so let's see, that's 15 equals, that's, that's positive 1. Minus x, x is 15. If I plug it back in, it should check out. Alright. Again, number 3, I'm going to make a separate video for. Let's go on to number 4. Alright, so in these problems, we're finding the domain and the zeros of each function. We want to write our domain and interval notation and our zeros as coordinates. Of course. Okay, so let's find the domain first. Remember, to take the square root. All right, I cannot take the square root of a negative number, so I want whatever is inside of my square root to be greater than or equal to zero. If I subtract five, I get negative x is greater than or equal to negative five. Divide by negative three. Remember when you divide by a fraction, you must, or excuse me, divide by negative inequalities, I must flip the sign, okay? If I divide by a negative in inequalities, my inequality, sign flips. So in the past we've had always had x is greater than or equal to. Well now we have x is less than or equal to. 
So x can equal any number less than 5 over 3. So that includes all of the negative numbers. And this is my greatest value. So remember in your domain, your largest possible value comes second. Since it's equal to, it's a hard close, a so bracket. My lowest possible value, which I don't know, comes first. So it's negative infinity to 5 over 3. My lowest possible value, x is less than or equal to any negative number, all the way up to my highest possible value, which is 5 thirds. Find the zeros, I set this equal to 0 and solve. We get rid of a square root, square both sides. 5x minus 3, add 3x, 3x equals 5, x equals 5 over 3. Remember, some of us made this mistake. Write it as a coordinate, 5 over 3, comma 0. All right, 5 over 3, comma 0. Don't be that guy. <laughs> Here we go. Next. All right, number five, similar problem. Okay, we're finding our zeros in our domain. All right, domain. Remember, the denominator of a fraction cannot equal zero. So x squared cannot equal nine. Square root both sides. X cannot equal, remember, if we're solving, we need plus or minus three. So my domain is going to come in three parts, actually. Not two parts, but three. Okay, so I'm going to have negative infinity to negative 3, negative 3 to 3, and then union 3 to infinity. All right, I'll do my zeros on here. Okay, this whole thing is my domain. All right, now I want to find my zeros. So remember, um, when you have a uh, <coughs> excuse me, function like this or a cyclical function, okay, a fraction, all right, um, I, th I can think about it as this. All right, zero, I set it equal to zero. But what, remember what's going to happen with your denominator. Your denominator is going to disappear, okay? So really all we're doing here, it's not going to disappear. It's just going to be multiplied by zero. So really all we're doing here is taking our numerator and setting it equal to zero. Subtract one. X equals negative one half. So my zeros are negative one half comma zero. Okay. All right, number six. This caused a lot of trouble for some of us. Okay. What is going on? Okay. So, remember, if my input is negative five, input is the same as your x. My output is 18. Output is my y. These can be written as ordered pairs. To, find, to write in a linear, uh, an equation for a linear function, I need to find two things. I need my slope first. I need to find my slope. Remember, it's y2 minus y1. So negative 27 minus 18 over x2, 4 minus negative 5, or 4 plus 5. Now here's the deal, okay? If you write, if I choose to go 18 minus negative 27, I must go negative 5 minus 4. Stay consistent, okay? Stay consistent. All right, so negative, da, 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 da. I said it's negative 45 over 9, 9, which gives me negative 5. Okay? Um, right as a linear equation, so there's a lot of different ways you can write it in point slope form. All right, y minus 18 equals negative 5 times x plus 5. Or using my other point, y plus 27 equals negative 5 times x minus 4. Or I can write it as a linear equation, y equals mx plus b form. 
all right, y equals negative 5x, uh, negative 25 minus 7. All three of these are acceptable answers, okay? Number seven and eight, transformations. Okay. All right. Remember, write it in order that it happens. So I want to work from the inside out. So first I have to deal with this two. Well, since this two is on the inside, that affects my X, which means I'll have a horizontal shrink. by a factor of two. Now remember, uh, if it's on the inside, I do the opposite, so I'm going to be dividing all of my x values by two. All right, my next step, okay, with deal with this negative, I'm gonna reflect over the x-axis. Last thing, kick, take care of the sevenths on the outside so it affects my y, so I go up seven. All right. Here we go, inside out. First thing, minus six. Remember, it's on the inside. You do the opposite of what you would expect, so I move it to the right. Six. Next, inside out. I took care of the inside. Now I want to work my way out, take care of this five. Okay, the five. Is going to, since it's on the outside of my parentheses, it is going to affect my y. All right, so that's going to be a vertical. Come on, dude. Vertical stretch by factor of 5 which means I multiply all my y's by five. Multiply all my y values by five. Last step, minus eight, means I'm going down, down, down. Eight. All right. All right, let's keep going. We're having so much fun here. I mean, I am at least, aren't you? Come on, of course you are. Here we go. Given the graph, apply the transformation to that graph. All right, so here's my graph. My original points, okay, four major turns, original, negative two, comma two, I mean, we've used this graph for a lot of things, haven't we? Okay, but that's on purpose, because it's a fun one, negative one, negative one, one, negative two, three, zero. Okay, remember, inside out, first thing I want to do is take care of this plus one. So I'm going to go left, one. If I'm moving to the left, right, I'm affecting, if I move to the left, I'm affecting my x here, which means I'm subtracting x, I'm subtracting one from all of my x's. So negative three, comma two. Negative two, negative one. Zero, negative two, and two, zero. All right, inside out, let's take care of this one fourth. All right, remember one fourth means a vertical stretch. One fourth. Vertical stretch, and if it's on the outside, that affects all of my y values. All right, it affects all my y values. Now, some of us may choose to do two steps in one, make that a negative one fourth. That is fine. All right, I'm going to show one step at a time here. Okay, so by one fourth, so that affects my y. So I multiply all my y's by one fourth. Two over four is one half. X's do not change. Negative one over four. Zero, negative one half, and two comma zero. My x values, notice my x values did not change. Did not change. Okay. 
that's going to take care of that negative. 